Hello students of standard 9. Welcome to DAV Moy Public School. I am your English teacher Jagruti Mehra. Let's begin our today's online session of English. Dear students, today we will start with the new unit from your word and expression book. Unit number 6. Dear students, you can see the photographs of presidents of India and they are chronologically given below. Can you identify them? Write down their names. Why is the president of India known as the first citizen of the country? Reading comprehension. Read the following passage and answer the questions that follow. Text number 1. I must have been about 7 when my father left Porbandar for Rajkot to become a member of Rajasthani court. There, I was put into primary school and I can well recollect those days, including the names of any particulars of the teachers who taught me. As I told Bandar, so dear, there is hardly anything to note about my studies. I could only have been a medical student. From the school, I went to suburban school and hence to high school. Having already reached my twelfth year, I do not remember having ever told a lie. During this period, either to my teachers or to my schoolmates. However, I used to be very shy and avoid all company. My books and my lessons were my sole companions. To be at school at the stroke of an hour and to run back home as soon as the school closed, that was my daily habit. There is an incident which occurred at the examination during my first year at high school and which is worth recording. Mr. Giles, the education inspector, had come on a visit of inspection. He had sent us five words to write as spelling exercise. One of the words was kettle. I had misspelled it. The teacher tried to prompt me with the point of his note, but I would not be prompted. It was beyond me to see that he wanted me to copy the spellings from my neighbor's leg. For I had thought that the teacher was there to supervise us against copying. <coughs> the result was that all boys except myself were found to have spelled every word correctly. I would never learn the art of copying, yet the incident did not at least diminish my respect for my teacher. I was by nature blind to the faults of elders. Later, I came to know of many other failings of this teacher, but my regards for him remained the same. Two another incidents belonging to the same time have always clung to my memory. As a rule, I had distaste for reading anything beyond my school books. The daily lessons I had to be done because I disliked being taken to task by my teacher as much as I disliked deceiving him. Therefore, I would go to the lessons, but often without my mind in them, thus, when even the lessons could not be done properly, there was of course no portion of an extra reading, but somehow my eyes fell on a book purchased by my father. It was Shravana Pitrabhakti Natika. I read it with intense interest. One of the pictures I was shown was Ravana carrying by means his legs fitted for his shoulders, his blind parents on a pilgrimage. The book and the picture left an indelible impression on my mind. Now choose the correct options from the bracket and fill in the blanks. Also answer the questions in brief in 30 words. Pick out five qualities and traits which young Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi had. One is already done for you. Let us move towards text number 2. Indra Krishnamurti Moi is an Indian American business executive. She is the chairman and chief executive officer of PepsiCo. She is one among the world's most powerful women. She delivered the following speech at the Rashpati Bhavan on 14 December 2013. It was named one of the 25th greatest living legends by NDTV and was awarded by then President of India Pranam Mukherjee.
week at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. Let us read the speech delivered by Indra Noe and answer the questions that follow. Mr. President and NDTV, thank you very much for this incredible honor. Malcolm Gladwell in his book Outlier says, Who you are cannot be separated from where you come from. I left India 35 years ago when and went to USA and had tremendous success in the metrocracy. But none of that would have happened if I would not have had wonderful upbringing very much here in India. So I have a lot to thank India for. Now my three lessons I would like to share with you. First, please be a lifelong student. You know. When we were kids, we used to ask questions like, why is the sky blue? Why the birds fly so high? But for some reason, as we get older, that curiosity goes away. And if we are happy with the knowledge we have, then we are actually going to atrophy. So please remain a lifelong student. Don't lose that curiosity. Second, whatever you do, Throw yourself into it. Throw your head, heart and hands into it. I took at my job not as a job. I look at it as a calling, as a passion. And I don't care about the arts, about the hardships because to me everything is a joy. So whatever you do, please look upon it as a calling, a passion, not as a job. Not as something temporary. The third and the most important one, please help other rights. Greatness comes not from a position but from helping build a future. All of us in a position of power have an obligation to pull others up. You know, as I understand here today, I look at myself responsible as a responsibility not as accepting an honor. I look upon it as accepting a challenge and a responsibility and obligation to actually make it possible for the people who are younger to come up and achieve levels of greatness. So they too can be on the stage sometimes in the future. Now dear students, answer the questions. Dear students, here we end our today's session. Have a nice day. Thank you. Move.